All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can uh, finally take this text that I have over here and add it into Tasker to get things to pull up from mysportsfeeds.com. Before you watch this video, please make sure you've watched the introduction where I talk about how you can get these text files that I already have saved online. You can download them and copy it and paste it directly into your Tasker task. Also make sure you have watched Tasker Auto Tools tutorial where I talk about creating a table using a web screen. We're going to be taking these arrays that we're going to be building and we're going to let the, uh, those arrays be our columns to our table that we're creating inside of Tasker. That'll make more sense if you watch this tutorial here. But um, what do we copy? What do we do with all this text? So here is the upcoming one. This is the one I'm going to show you in this tutorial. But once you get the hang of this, it applies to all of the sports, NBA, NFL, NHL, and Major League Baseball. It can apply to player stats, uh, final game scores, the outcomes, anything like that that you can get from mysportsfeeds.com. Once you get the hang of how this JavaScript works, you can get whatever information you want. So as you see here, this is the upcoming games for the Dallas Stars, and it goes for the rest of the season. But what's important is that uh, every time they play a game, like their next game is on the 6th of November, once that game passes, that whole row there is going to be gone because uh, it's not going to be on the particular XML file that I'm pulling. Well, let me go ahead and show you how this is set up in Tasker before I go into uh, the nitty-gritty part of the tutorial. So I already have these made, and again, in one of those videos, the introduction video, I talked about where you could get all of these text files to experiment and learn from this, but they all work the same. So I'm gonna to go to the Dallas Stars upcoming. All of this stuff is gonna be available on Tasker Files really soon. Uh, probably later on today is when I plan on updating that. So for those of you that have subscribed to the Tasker Files, go ahead and pick these up and start playing around with it. For those that haven't, that's fine. That's why you can get these text files for free right off my CraftMath uh, shared folder on my Google Drive. So um, inside of this task, Dallas Stars upcoming, the HTTP get is what you want to copy and paste here for this example. Uh, let me show that to you over here as well to show you what it looks like on the internet. So over at mysportsfeeds.com, going to API, going to API documentation. And what I want to get here is the schedule for the Dallas Stars, but I want to uh, put some parameters into it to where I'm only getting the games that haven't been played yet. I don't want the full game schedule. But what I am going to do here for NHL is I'm going to select full game schedule, click on this XML sample. And what's going to load up here is every single game from the beginning of the 2017-2018 season for every single team. That's a lot of crap. Uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to come to the end of this URL and I'm going to put some parameters to narrow this search down. These parameters are discussed back here at the API documentation website. So I'm going to show you a few of them so you can, uh, as you experiment with this on your own, you can narrow down your searches as well. So at the end, after the .xml, I'm gonna put a question mark. And what you're gonna see up here is that I already have, uh, here's my question mark. Here's team equals Dow. That's the abbreviation for Dallas. And then I'm putting another search parameter up here. So I'm separating it with the and. And then I have date equals since today. You can uh, define a particular date, um, or in this case, since today means from today until the rest of the season's over with. So therefore, this XML file is going to be updated every time the Dallas Stars play a game. That game is going to get removed for this one because it says since today. That means from today onward. And looking back here at some of the search parameters, we can do season name, team, status, date. Here's all the different ways you can define dates. Uh, and the one I did here is something similar to this, but that's since yesterday. So that would include games that happened one day ago in that XML. Well, this JavaScript that we have over here in this text document is the next piece. So adding these actions, let me show you that. Just go to plus, let's do HTTP, and you want to do the get right there. Once you do that, you will need to type in the URL, um, this, which is exactly what I have right here. So this is the HTTP get. The first part up here, um, which is slightly different than the URL over here, is my username and my password that I'm putting in the URL so that I can log in to this XML file because it will require you to log in. Um, but that right here is copied and pasted over here into this. 
And as you can see here, I've just scrolled back to the beginning to show you this the exact same thing. And that's all we have to do for the HTTP get. Now let's look at the JavaScript. The JavaScript is this next piece of information. Now, if you're just starting with JavaScript, a lot of this is not going to make sense, but I just want to show you how to quickly get this stuff to work. I'm taking all of that stuff right there. We copy and paste it into this JavaScript, which what this is going to do, this is going to build four arrays for me. It's going to build the home team, the away team, the time of the game and the date of the game and those arrays are blank at the beginning of this JavaScript this for loop here is what's going to actually push items home dot push uh, that's going to push stuff into this home array away dot push that's going to push stuff into this one so I kind of got them separated with enter so that you can kind of see where I'm pushing stuff and down here I have a little bit of extra uh, JavaScript going on where I'm doing part of the date if you look over here at some of these dates uh, for example, uh, it has the 2017 with a hyphen. I wanted to get rid of that, so I'm doing a substring. But that's just some extra pieces. And again, that's the two main things you need to get it set up. Now, if you have followed the Tasker and Auto Tools creating a table using a web screen tutorial, from there, that's what this Auto Tools web screen is. So inside of this thing, and again, this is really based off that tutorial I just uh, posted yesterday or the day before, um, where we can do our title. But what I want to show you here is the data. So the titles of my columns are time, date, home, and away. I'm going to have four columns because we had these four arrays that we want to throw into this table. The text is actually going to be those arrays that were created time date home away this is very similar to this tutorial except now we're letting the the internet we're letting the xml file build these arrays using this javascript and again i did mention there make sure your column names uh, match your arrays here that way everything will be lined up in its right spot but since we have four of those i'm going to define my column number as being four columns and then i did mention this in this previous tutorial about vertical mode make sure you have vertical mode set on that's going to throw each individual array into each column. It's going to go down instead of left to right. And um, that's the setup. So to get you a little bit more familiar with uh, the JavaScript and how I'm pulling information, I'm just going to go to this XML. I'm going to right click on it in Google Chrome and I'm going to go to inspect. That's going to bring up developer tools and in developer tools, we want to go to console and we're going to start doing a little bit of JavaScript. So make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And now what I want to show you here, first of all, is these full game entries. Uh, as you can see right here, full game entry. This is the next game that the Dow Stars have coming up because I see that date right there. 11-6. Remember, we saw that back on our table. And then I also see the away team, uh, the Jets, the home team is the Dallas Stars. So those are some of those pieces of information that I'm getting. And what else was I also getting? The date, the time, full name for the away team, and the full name for the home team. Now, in Google Chrome, the developer tools, we have to access stuff first by using what's called document. So I'm going to do document dot get elements by tag name. And then inside of here, I want to refer to whatever tag I want to get. So for right now, I'm just going to do full game entry. And that's this tag right here. And what is this referring to? Now, if I let it be just like that, what this is going to do is it's going to return. I don't want to press enter on this, but full game entry. All of these that you see here are actual individual games that are on their schedule. So what I'm interested in here is What's the length of this thing? How many of these full game entry pieces do we have in this XML file? To get that, I'm going to do length, dot length. So there's 68 games that are upcoming for the Dallas Stars. Now we can set that equal to a variable. So I can, uh, I'm going to press up, go back to this code here, and I'm going to say num games is equal to that stuff. So num games is equal to that. So now what I can do is I can refer to num games and it's going to return that 68 because I'm letting it be the length. Now this number will change once the Dow stars play a game. Okay. Now let's go back into this full game entry. And this is referred to since this is the first or the next game. It's the first one that's upcoming. It's actually indexed with a zero, not a one. So let me show you this document dot get elements by tag name. I'm going to do full game entry, but instead of me doing the length, I'm going to refer to that first one, which has an index of zero. Now we can start looking and refer to these things as children. I understand that, but I think for those of you just getting started, I think it's going to be easier to follow along if I use tag name some more. So let's go to dot 
get elements by tag name again and the tag I want so right now when I put this zero here it's looking at this first full game entry all of this stuff all the way to the end of this full game entry notice we have a next full game entry down there so what piece of information do I want let's get the full date and I'm gonna we're gonna get it to return all of this stuff to us right here so get elements by tag name in quotes I'm gonna put full date and I, you have to put an index here too. There's only one of them there, but we still have to refer to it. I need to put my little single quote right there. But we still have to refer to it uh, with an index. So index of zero. So it's in full game zero. That's going to be this first game. Then it's going to get elements by tag name, full date zero, where well, there's only one here, but we still have to put the zero. But to actually get that piece of information that you see highlighted here, I'm going to do dot enter HTML. And notice we are getting that date right there. So if you're looking at the for loop in the text file, what I want to do is I'm going to come back up here. And instead of my full game entry zero, I'm going to go to the second game that they have upcoming. So I'm going to change that to a one. If I press enter there, this is the date of the next game that the Dallas Stars have. To show you that, I'm going to come to this second one. I'm going to click on that. And if I go to its date, notice it says November 10th, 2017. So that's where the for loop comes in. Now, I could turn this tutorial into an hour and a half long tutorial on doing the for loop, but I have done some for loops in the past in previous videos. But basically, the for loop is going to loop through all of these game entries, and it's going to get each individual date. And uh, I actually did a substring on it to cut out the first part of this date, the 2017 with the hyphen. Um, if you look back at the table that I showed you at the beginning, I was returning just the month and the day. But uh, just one more quick example here. Let's also look at how to get the teams, the away team and the home team. Now you can do slightly different techniques. I'm gonna come back up to full game entry zero. I'm gonna to go to get elements by tag name. So I'm gonna go back up to my first game. Index is zero. And if I want to get the away team, I'm gonna to go to get elements by tag name, full away team. I'm gonna index that with a zero. Of course, there's only one of these tags full away team, but again, we still have to index it to access it. Then I'm gonna do another dot get elements by tag name. And the tag I want to get now is going to be the full name. And then index that with a zero. And let's do dot enter HTML. And if I press enter, check it out, we got the jets. Okay, how do I get the stars? Well, the only thing that's gonna be different there is that the stars are the home team this time. So if I go back to this code again and I change away team to home team, uh, notice we have the stars. If I come back to the code where I got the jets here, it's the same exact code and I change this to full game entry one, it's gonna come down here to the next game and it should pull Islanders for the away team. So away team, full game entry one, which is the second team. Let's see what we get, the Islanders. So if I come back to that same code again and I change the away team to home team, again, we are going to have the Dallas Stars on that one. Let's go to find one. This would be the third game, which has an index of two. The Dallas Stars are now going to be the away team on our third game. Their third game from now is go they're going to be an away team. So that's gonna be an index of two in this code. Changing my index to two, changing the word home to away team, and now the stars are going to be the away team. So as you can see, we want to have a for loop to run through every single one of these full game entries that we have, all this stuff here. It's gonna loop through it and we're going to get those things that I showed you in the following text file. So maybe uh, some of this stuff here where I'm doing get elements by tag name is making a little bit more sense. The for loop, I have a variable I inside of here. That's what's allowing me to uh, pull those different full game entries. You may say, well, where the heck is the word schedule coming from? Well, I created a variable up here. Schedule is doc dot get elements by tag name full game entry. So the only thing I'm missing on the end there is the index. So if I refer to schedule that variable and then I tack on that index I, it's going to start with zero. That's what that first part of that for loop means. It's gonna add one every time after it runs through this loop and it's gonna keep, so it's gonna be zero, 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 zero. 
and then it's going to be one 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 two 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 three 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 and it's going to keep doing this as long as the variable i that i've defined here is less than num games and i showed you the number of games i think it was what 68 so it's going to do this thing you know 68 times to get all this information the home team the away team the time and the date so do, assuming that you, I mean, again, that's not a full-fledged tutorial on JavaScript, but hopefully uh, you, that does allow you to uh, make a little bit more sense of what all this stuff means over here. Uh, I encourage you to check out W3 Schools. Uh, go to Google, check them out. That's where I learned quite a bit of stuff. And then also a lot of people uh, in the G Plus community have helped me out, whether it be Tasker G Plus community, some HTML communities, um, tons of folks. I got a couple of books. But assuming you have all that set up, if we back out of here, we check this, that's the Dallas Stars upcoming. To add that little uh, icon to your wallpaper, it depends on what launcher you have. If I hold down, I go to widgets on Nova Launcher. I scroll down to Tasker, and if I hold on Task Shortcut and I can just drag a little piece up there, then I can pick whichever one I want. Now, obviously, there's going to be two of these now, but there's the Dallas Stars upcoming task that we just created. And these two are going to pretty much do the same thing. Obviously, I've gone in and renamed this using the Nova Launcher features. But um, yeah, there you have it. You know, clicking on that right there, that's going to pull up all 68 of those games with the home team, the away team, the time, and the date. So pick up all of these text files, Houston Astros, the Dallas Stars outcomes, what's the other ones I have, the NFL next three days. All of those are what I showed you in the intro video to mysportsfeeds.com. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.